Yo, what is up YouTube, Grey here, and today we are here with our PPL Week 7, I believe, match against Omega Jolteon and the Chicago Caracosta. Uh, I would like to preface this by saying this is my first Draft League battle, and I joined the league on a Tuesday and we played on a Wednesday, because I was very aware that he was very behind with his schedule, because uh, Colton, who I replaced, uh, unfortunately had to drop out, and uh, yeah, so I didn't have too much time to prep. But uh, no excuses, like this is uh, a close battle regardless, it's a very long battle, uh, this went on for like almost a full timer. So uh, yeah, the team that he had, if I just uh, get his team up for one second, uh, I, I also asked for the trades but obviously because uh, he was waiting to play and he had prepped for uh, Colton's team, I said that's fine, I'll stick with the team that I've got at the moment. Uh, See, uh, his team is Mega Diancy, Gliscor, Hydreigon, Celebi, Suicune, Salazzle, Me and Shao, Miltank, Selgor, and Dusk Noir. So, uh, the team that I had to choose from, uh, trying to remember off the top of my head, was Garchomp, Starmie, Sizzle, Sylveon, um, Mega Venusaur, Magnectric, uh, Regice, Ditto, Golbat, and Blacephalon, maybe something else that I'm forgetting. Oh, Scrafty as well. So, uh, yeah, the team I ended up going with was a specially defensive uh, Sylveon with a Kebia Berry, uh, Hyper Voice, Hidden Power Ground, Wish, Hill Bell, a little bit of special attack investment. This was specifically to try and uh, Oko Salazzle, because Salazzle was such a threat to it. Uh, it really kind of. It, it didn't have anything. Else, like I had to run a Kevia Berry in case he ran like a Life Orb or I think Salazzle was a Zemon. So uh, yeah, if you run Sludge Wave, it would have done so much to me and it was kind of pointless having it as a wall. Uh, next up I had Garchomp which was bulky, adamant, choice scarf. It seems like a weird set but uh, in my prep like I didn't feel like he was going to run Scarf High Dragon so I wasn't too worried about that. And then he had quite a big gap under that on his speed tiers and so I felt like I didn't really see, uh, need to run much speed, and I'd much rather run a lot of bulk to try and be able to live hits. Uh, I ran Dragon Claw, EQ, Shadow Claw, and Stealth Rock. Uh, I was very close to running HP Ice over Shadow Claw just so I didn't get walled by Gliscor. Uh, in hindsight, that'd been an absolutely great idea. It would have changed the game, but uh, yeah, instead I ran Shadow Claw for. Uh, Celebi. It didn't do too much more than Dragon Claw, so I, I genuinely don't know why I ran Shadow Claw. Uh, next up I had Scizor, which was uh, Adamant Bulky with an Okabara, U-Turn, Bullet Punch, Knock Off, Swords Dance. And uh, again, like this thing could have done work to his team, like especially like it threatened out Mega Diancy every turn. And Mega Diancy was a big threat to my team, so I really liked the thought of having that. Okabara is there, obviously, for any hidden power fires. It wasn't going to live a Fire Blast from Salazzle regardless, but I would never stay in anyway, so. Uh, next up we had a Choice Specs Magnectric uh, with Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, HP Ice and Signal Beam. This is kind of my win con, this is a late game sweeper hopefully, and it's modest, so it's going to do a shitload of damage to anything that he wants to bring in on it. And uh, yeah, it, it's just there to hit things hard. Uh, next up we have Mega Venusaur with mixed bulk, more on the physical side, uh, Giga Drain, Sludge Brom, uh, Synthesis and Worry Seed. Uh, Worry Seed is something that could come in handy. Uh, Gliscor, if I take away its Toxic Kill link, has, uh, like, it's detrimental to it having that Toxic Poisoning. The Salazzle won't be able to use corro uh, Toxic on me because it loses Corrosion. And also the Suicune won't be able to set up Rest, which means that I can take it on 1v1. Uh, next up we have a second choice Scarfer, we have uh, Starmie with what was natural cure, cure was Ashimed via Analytics, so that was a misgen on my part. But uh, no excuses again, like it wouldn't have made any difference in the game I don't think. Uh, maybe like a little bit extra damage, but it is what it is. Uh, ran Hydro Pump, Thunderbolt, Dazzling Gleam and Trick. Uh, the main reason I ran this set was firstly I forgot about Celebi and secondly uh, Trick was really nice against, again, Gliscor, but I'd have to trick off the Toxic Orb onto something else. Uh, yeah, Gliscor and Suicune. Uh, Suicune, especially if it's set up, I've got to, or if it's a 
uh, Krogoon or a subs variant, then I can trick it and hopefully it doesn't become a threat. Uh, so anyway, he brought Gliscor, Hydreigon, Celebi, Salazzle, Suicune and Mega Diancy. His team is very scary, it's very fat. And uh, yeah, let's get into the battle. Okay, so uh, I decided that my best lead here was uh, Sizzle to try and get off some damage on whatever he goes into because everything but this guy's score would have taken a decent amount of damage. I've also sped up this video just because it's taking, like, it was such a long battle it, and very stally in parts, especially at the beginning and the end. Uh, I felt like it's probably best just to speed it up so it didn't become so monotonous. Uh, I go for the U-turn, he goes for the Protect, gets his uh, Toxic Poisoning off. That is fine with me. Uh, I have nothing that comes into an Earthquake particularly well. I did realise that after a, the battle started. If it was an offensive Gliscor, I have very little for it. Uh, I U-turn out because I can't touch this thing. And I got into my Mega Venusaur. And uh, I can just throw off a Giga Drain. At this point, there's no point in predicting. And he does go out into a Celebi. A Sludge Bomb would have been nice, it would have done half. But uh, at this point, I don't know what a Celebi set is. He could have just recovered it off. He could have been Choice Spec Psychic, so I wouldn't have stayed in next turn. So, yeah, I go for the Giga Drain, and I do a reasonable amount of damage, and it's a crit, which makes no difference in the grand scheme of the battle at all. Uh, he swaps out. Uh, don't know what he was fearing, particularly, or whether he just wants to go out into Salazzle. Um, but I make the switch out into Sylveon, so I guess that's a nice predict on his part. However, I am Kevia Berry with HP Ground, so I am not afraid to stay in. And he reveals the substitute. And I'm like, uh, that's not the end of the world. I just keep spamming HP Ground, and I will eventually win the War of Attrition. And if he decides to attack me, Kevia Berry pops, and I kill his Slazzle. Big threat to my team. And he goes for Disable. And this is really nice prep on his part. Because uh, now I have nothing for it, but I do predict a switch and go for Hyper Voice. Doesn't do much damage, and at this point I'm like, oh well, I can't really touch this thing, so I've got to switch uh, switch out. Yeah, words are in. Uh, English is hard, guys. English is hard. So uh, he goes for the Toxic on the switch into Mega Venusaur. Nice play on his behalf. Uh, obviously, whether it's Sylveon or Mega Venusaur, that is going to be a good move for him, and. <coughs> At this point, I can't let him set up a sub, so I go for Sludge Bomb, which I know is guaranteed to break his sub unless he's got uh, quite a bit of bulk. And, of course, it does break the sub. Make me uh, very well that he doesn't have a whole lot of bulk. Uh, at least as, as, well, according to my calc, that is what it was. Uh, he's going to withdraw knowing he can't uh, sub up on me. And he goes out into Hydreigon. I go for another Sludge Bomb because I can't let him... Uh, sub up, and no matter what a switch is in, uh, it's going to be nice. Potential poisoning on Suicune or Hydreigon. I do get the poison and a reasonable amount of damage. Uh, however, at this point, I do want my Venusaur to be at a reasonable amount of health, and I need to scout this set. And he goes for Roost, which makes me believe that actually this is a very bulky Hydreigon, and that I don't really want to switch into my Garchomp because it may not uh, may not occur it with Dragon Claw. Uh, so. We both roost up, we both take poison damage, and I take a hefty amount of poison jab damage in that turn. Uh, I decided my best switch is to go into Sylveon and try and get a heal bow up. He goes out into his Salazzle, nice prediction again on his behalf, and yeah, I, I, I switch out into this Sylveon. Uh, again, I feel like I can't let him set a sub, but at the same time I need that toxic poisoning off of Mega Venusaur, so I just go for a heal bow as he does use his sub. Again, I know that I can break his sub with a HP ground. If he goes for Sludge Wave, then I'm not too worried. I think I take about half after Kebia Berry. Uh, he goes for a Toxic. That's fine with me. Uh, I can heal bow that off later in the game. Uh, so I just go for a Hidden Power Ground to break the sub, because the last thing I want is this Salazzle behind the sub, because it can be very difficult for my team to deal with. I'm just going to take a quick drink, because talking for this long with very little breaks is difficult. And we take poison damage. <clears throat> He's going to swap out into his uh, Celebi. And I'm fine with this. I swap out. I go into my Starmie. And at this point, he doesn't know what I'm going to bring. Uh, I might have Signal Beam. I might have Ice Beam. It's going to do a lot of damage. Uh, I predict him to switch out. So I go out into my uh, Garchomp. Uh, unfortunately, he goes out into Suicune. Which 
is a reasonable switch into a signal beam if you expect it. And uh, at this point, the game starts to go a little bit downhill for me as uh, he scolds my switch into Mega Venusaur. At this point, I think it's okay. If he's a rest set, then I got Worry Seed. And he goes for Calm Mind as I expect him to switch out there. Like, this is a very aggressive Calm Mind. Uh, if I was physical, then he could have taken a lot of damage, but he did see the Sludge Bomb earlier, so, and the Googa Drain. Actually, never mind, I'm talking shit. Uh, Calm Mind was a good play, uh, aggressive play. I go for the Worry Seed as he uses Sub, and at this point I'm like, oh shit, I have nothing to take this thing down. Uh, <laughs> I go for a Giga Drain, hoping that maybe I get some crit or a high roll or something to try and break this Sub, so I don't lose to this thing and unfortunately I don't break the sub. I think the play would have been to Giga Drain again here uh, but I didn't want to keep, have him keep setting up car mines because at that point I very like, have a very limited ability to win. Like the only way I could win was by just wearing this thing down or by getting a scarf onto it. Uh, I go into main neck trick and in hindsight I should just click Volt Switch because it breaks the sub and I get to go out into maybe a Starmie and trick it. Uh, he doesn't know that I'm Choice Scarf Trick, that's a very niche set, so it would have been a great play. He goes for a Scold and it does so much damage and I get Burn. And the Burn really sucks because it means now that he can just stay in, he can protect and I just go down to Burn. I don't really, like, there's nothing I can do with Main Trick at this point. I could save it for Death Fodder, but like this is the most scary thing at the moment. So I need to kind of let this thing go down, so I can bring my Starmie in and I can trick it, which is what I do. So here's the big play: if he stays in, then I and goes for Calm Mind, then this Suicune is no longer a threat. And fortunately for me, he does. So he's now locked into Calm Mind. He has to switch out. And I've gained lefties, which makes me slightly bulkier. Like, I didn't have a whole lot of uh, HP or special defense investment, but I had a little bit. So, I predict him to go out into High Dragon, because it's his best switch into this. And I go for a Dazzling Gleam. If I was analytic, analytic this would have died. However, he lives. Uh, he is bulky as shit. Can we just point out the fact that he just lives a Dazzling Gleam from a timid Starmie? Like, how absurd is that? Uh, I should have gone for Dazzling Gleam again and not revealed the fact that I had Thunderbolt because now he knows that if I have water or psychic coverage he can go into this thing and have no issues whatsoever because if I had hidden that last move he may have thought okay well we might still have Ice Beam, he might have Signal Beam, I can't switch into Celebi cleanly uh, and so I go into my Sylveon, it's my special check it's the only thing that could potentially take a Shattered Psyche from this and he goes for Calm Mind I didn't expect two setup Mons on one team. I was expecting him to have grass coverage for Starmie, because Starmie could threaten out. Uh, as I go for Hill Bell, and now I'm sitting in the face of a potential Z Celebi, which it will be. He goes for the Shattered Psyche. I know I live this, and unfortunately, like I'm go gonna go for a Wish here, which would have made too much difference, but like. I could have swapped out into something potentially and caught the wish and unfortunately I misclick and I press hidden power ground that absolutely does nothing to this like it's a plus one uh, <laughs> Celebi and yeah I, I literally do nothing at this point I feel it's just best for Sylveon to go down so I can switch into something and threaten this out and my switch in here is Garchomp it has the Shadow Claw and I think he thinks at this point I might still be Dragonium Z and so he switches out into his Suicune, it's something of death fodder I think at this point because it's scarfed and it's not going to be doing a whole lot. Uh, so I go for a Shadow Claw, that doesn't do a lot. Uh, Dragon Claw was definitely the play there because it still did a lot of damage, I think it did like 10% less than Shadow Claw but it still would have done a bit. Uh, he goes for Scold, I go into Starmie, that does nothing. Like this is now my switch into a, uh, a Suicune because I am Natural Cure because Miss Gen and he does burn me I don't really care. And uh, he goes into his Celebi, he has firmly worked out that at this point I can't touch it. Uh, I go for Hydro Pump, a little bit of chip damage. The plan is now to get rid of Celebi, is to chip it down enough that uh, Garchomp can kill it. Uh, unfortunately I missed the Hydro Pump, uh, and I'd go to Garchomp. If I hit the uh, Hydro Pump it was a roll as to whether Shadow Claw would kill. Uh, 
he goes for a psychic, does a decent amount of damage and switches out. So he definitely is afraid of this thing, but at the same time he has a perfectly good switch into Gliscor. Uh, I go for the Stealth Rock, because my only way I feel to win at this point is to try and chip things away, try and wear them down. I haven't seen Recover on Celebi yet, so it may still have the Grass coverage, Psychic coverage, and then Hidden Power of Fire, because otherwise it wouldn't be able to touch Sizzle. And uh, chipping away it gives me a good chance of winning. I go into my Venusaur with a special defense investment that I may have lived. Uh, I would have lived a Psychic from Celebi, but I would have lived a Psychic from Diancy had he not got that crit. Uh, so the crit. I, I guess in the grand scheme of the battle probably didn't matter, um, but yeah, in that sense it did. I predicted him to go into Slazzle because he didn't want me to Giga Drain too much health, and I get, I think, a high roll on that and take out his Slazzle after rocks. So that's one big threat out of the way, and just another like three big threats to take care of. Uh, he goes into his uh, Mega Diancy. I should have swapped it. This, really, like, Mega Venusaur did kind of check his team a little bit, at least checked his Gliscor. And I could have healed up and I just let it go down. I could have swapped into my Starmie and then had the offensive pressure to take him out because I did out of speed. Uh, as I go into Starmie now, and yeah, uh, at this point, Celebi kind of just wins the game. Because unless I'm able to do. I miss again, by the way. I miss Hydro Pumps, like. I, I, I don't even know what. But uh, yeah, Celebi kind of wins the game unless I can chip it down and it doesn't have recover. We've obviously seen Carmine, so uh, and then yeah, he does go for the recover. As I switch in my Sizzle, it's a bit of a risky switch. He may have predicted it and gone for HP Fire. Uh, he swaps out, which makes me believe that maybe the HP used earlier wasn't Fire for some reason. But again, I can't do anything to Gliscor. It's his switch in every time. Uh, so I go for a U-turn, and I'm just trying to get some kind of momentum going. But it's very difficult when I know that my offensive Mons can't break his walls unless I take one of them down. Uh, he's obviously not going to stay in with Gliscor, as I believe I go for a Hydro Pump again and I fucking hit the thing, finally. <coughs> and uh, it does a reasonable amount of damage. Like, it's enough that I can slowly ship away at it if it doesn't have. Uh, sorry, if it didn't have recover, but since we know it does have recover at this point, Celebi kind of just wins the game. Uh, I go out into my Scizor, he does predict that. I go for the HP Fire, he had no reason to go for anything else, to be fair, because he knew that my Starmie couldn't touch it. And at this point, I literally have nothing. I just had to do damage, and Bullet Punch does a very good amount of damage. It does put it in range in which Garchomp can now come in and finish the kill. Uh, Dragon Claw would kill from this range. And if I can get rid of Celebi, I can still win this game. Because Celebi is the only thing checking Starmie, uh, besides a Scarfed uh, Suicune, in which I can just T-Bolt over and over until it dies. Uh, he goes into his uh, Gliscor, and that does a really good amount of damage. And I think my play is to stay in, however I switch out, because I don't know if he's got Roost or not at this point. Uh, that he could have had Ice Fang for some reason, uh, just specifically to check Garchomp. And if only I had run Hidden Power Ice, because this Gliscor would have died, like straight up just died to a Hidden Power Ice. Uh, at the very least it would have died to two. And also it would have given me another thing that could have hit Celebi. Obviously it couldn't have hit this very well. Uh, I decided at this point I just need to get rid of the Suicune because it's there and it's still kind of annoying. Uh, I go for an EQ, it's going to live it, but it's put it in range of which rocks and a light breeze will take it out. So he's going to swap out. I should have predicted this again. Like I played far too passively in this game. If there's one thing that I can take away from this match, is that I well, played way too predictable, way too passive, and to be fair, my sets were just not good enough. And my win check, I let go down way too early in main electric. Uh, yeah, I switch out, I have to kind of do something, like I can't sit there and just EQ. It takes a huge amount of damage from this Gliscor's Earthquake, and at this point there really is no way of me winning, because I have no way to break through that Celebi. It can just sit there and it can recover, it can calm mind, and yeah, it just beats my team. Uh, I give it a Hydro Pump, I hit it again, doesn't really matter, like, I could have done anything. I think at this point he's just sacking off his Suicune. Uh, so, it leaves him with Diancy, Salvi, and Gliscor. There's no way I can win. Like, basically no way I can win, unless I get, like, a high roll crit Dazzling Gleam here. I think that was the only way I could possibly win. 
and even then it was very unlikely. Uh, it does like half of his health, he's got a good chunk left, and he just has to recover off. At this point, it's a one game for him. Uh, so I'm just going to say GG to Omega, he does win this one 3-0. Uh, you'll see as the battle plays out what happens, he just has to basically keep stalling me and like, I need like the mother of all crits from a Shadow Claw, but he's not going to let his Celebi just take that Shadow Claw, so uh, yeah at this point he can just swap into Glide Square every time and he wins. So. Uh, yeah, this kind of end battle is very stally. I think it took like 25 minutes for the first kill to happen. Uh, just to put it into perspective, obviously you get in the sped up version. And then like in a, about a 10 minute patch, everything died. And then there was another like 15 minutes of stalling at the end because like I can do enough damage to his walls, his walls can do enough damage to like consist, like to be able to very easily break down Garchomp and uh, Starmie. And yeah, as you see, Garchomp goes down to the Earthquake. At this point, I know I've lost. So I'm just like, no point in stalling out the battle any longer than I have to. Uh, let's just go into Starmie. And uh, I have the thought of, you know what, Starmie actually takes everything else down other than uh, Celebi. So I think I do go for the, <coughs> go for the Hydro Pump on the Switch. And at this point, I think, okay, well, my only real win con here is to uh, get paralysis and like get consistent paralysis like I gotta get like six or seven in a row so that he's whittled down to a point at which he can't kill me he goes for a calm mind trying to speed up the process I guess of taking down this celebrate uh, taking down this star me which I'm absolutely fine with like I'm 99% sure at this point I've lost the match unless I get insane hacks luck and uh, <coughs> uh, he goes for a cover this kind of annoyed me a little bit because, like, it was still, but like, at the same time, like, his only way of losing was if he just get hacked out. And at this point, yeah, there is no way of me winning. He's a full health Celebi, which is taking about 5% from my Dazzling Gloom. So, uh, Paralysis just kind of drags out the battle a little bit longer. And uh, he just kind of needs to slowly wear away at my Starmie at this point. He goes for a Psychic, and that does nothing. Like that does such a little amount of damage. This is why I thought he might bring the grass coverage because it just couldn't touch Starmie. Like if I ran a specially bulky, that's not even specially bulky, that's an offensive Starmie and it just tanks the hits from uh, plus one Celebi. Uh, so I guess in a sense like that prep was weird, but at the same time why would he stay in if he thought I had single beam? So I guess in that sense it makes sense. But uh, Starmie probably would have been able to have beaten Celebi 1v1 had I run signal beam. That's bad prep on my part. And uh, yeah, as you can see, this kind of just drags on. Uh, paralysis and recovers. Uh, I was kind of wondering why he was constantly recovering. That, but at the same time, like, he had no reason not to. We had about five minutes left on the timer when the battle ended, so there was plenty of time left. And uh, I believe this turn, he is just going to take me out. So yeah, GG to Omega. Again, his uh, links will be down in the description. Really good guy. Uh, and yeah, really fun battle. Like, first battle was not a 6-0, which I'm really happy about. But I know it's a loss, so I shouldn't be happy necessarily. But it's yeah, it, it wasn't a like major kind of loss. Uh, Trying to get a good frame to like that that that'll do. That's fine. Uh, yeah, so it it wasn't a terrible loss. It was probably some bad prep on my part. Some bad play. Uh, definitely will learn from this battle and hopefully do better in the next ones. So uh, I believe the next video will be against uh, Paulie Mac and the West Coast Wing Goals. Our week 8 because we are catching up on battles. We're a couple of weeks behind. But uh, yeah, a week 8 battle will be against uh, Paulie Mac and the West Coast Wing Goals. Should be a really good matchup. And uh, yeah, I'll go see you guys in the next video. Peace.